Hey friends, Jeff Fritz here with another 10 minute tip as I continue exploring Python. Now, I learned a little bit about the Intel distribution and how they're taking advantage of some of their C++ libraries to make Python faster, particularly when I'm using things like Scikit and NumPy libraries. But check out this graph that they provided for us with information about how their Python distribution compares to their native C++ implementation of their data analytics acceleration library. It's huge. The standard distribution of Python is barely a blip on the radar in these one core processor machines, but on 32 cores, it's not even on the radar. It's, it's nothing. Where the Intel Python distribution is almost 100% utilization of the facilities of that C++ library. That's tremendous, but I want to learn more. Let's go over to Visual Studio Code. Let's check out using a couple of different random number generation algorithms and see what we can, what we can find out on this machine and learn from there. All right, here I am in Visual Studio Code, and I've opened up IPython. I've got my integrated Python REPL here, and let's just, let's just take a quick look at generating a random array of about 10,000 numbers and see what the performance difference is when we compare the stock Python distribution versus the Intel distribution. So I'll start off by importing NumPy, and from NumPy, I'll bring in both the random and random Intel capabilities. This is great because we have two modules of functionality, both random and random Intel, that have the exact same signature so that we can actually use them interchangeably when we're ready to go from that stock distribution and upgrade and start using the Intel distribution and Intel facilities with Python. All right, let's time running that random generation for 10,000 numbers. On this machine, which is an Intel Core i7-7700 CPU at 3.6 gigahertz with eight logical processors, I'm seeing that the average run here was about 750 microseconds, plus or minus 88 microseconds per loop. That's pretty good. But let's do this again, and let's swap out from random to the random Intel version. Hello. Look at that. 118 microseconds, about a sixth of the runtime duration when I was running with the stock random number generation. That's, that's pretty good, and even more precision at 1.86 microseconds on my standard deviation. That's huge. That is a tremendous improvement, and all I had to do was swap out random for random intel. All right, you're not impressed. I know you're not impressed. Let's, uh, let's take a look at a little bit more here. Let's look at some random number generation seeding algorithms and see what we can do to expose a little bit of performance with those as well. All right, let's take a look at this sample code now. We're going to bring in that same NumPy library, and we're also going to bring in the random Intel capabilities. We're going to set up some timers to generate 10,000 random numbers, but we're going to swap in several different pseudo random number generators and then test their performance relative to the Mersenne Twister basic random number generator, the MT19937. You can see it here and here we're going to reference it. We're actually going to calculate the relative performance compared to that Mersenne Twister algorithm and we're we're going to use some of these standard algorithms that you may have seen hanging out here. The Wichman Hill algorithm, the Phylox block cipher algorithms. We're going to use that MT2203. That's a set of 6,024 random number generators. Um, we're going to use the MRG32K3A there. That's a multiple recursive pseudo random number generator. And check out this one that we have over here, this SFMT19937. This is the SIMD optimized Mersenne Twister. This is one that's optimized to behave even better on our Intel processors. I've got a method defined here that's going to take the performance out of this dictionary, this T data dictionary that we're going to calculate and build out here. And we're going to compare exactly how much faster 
or slower each one of these algorithms is compared to that Mersenne Twister algorithm. All right, let's run this here in Visual Studio Code and see what kind of numbers we get. All right, take a look at that. So we have the name of the algorithm and then the relative performance compared to the standard Mersenne Twister. And you can see here, there it is at 1.0. That's kind of what we expect. That's the benchmark. But these ones are faster. Phylox, Witchman Hill, and there's the SIMD one, the one that's running in parallel, making use of all eight cores of my processor, is actually 25% faster than the standard library that everybody uses, right? That Mersenne Twister is the common one that lots of folks want to use. But look at how much slower some of these other ones are. Now, I kind of expect the MT2203, where it's running those 6,000 random number generators, it's actually only two and three quarters times slower, even though it's running so many more in parallel. That's pretty impressive. That's really showing me here that when I do use my parallel processing on my Intel processor with their distribution of Python, I'm going to get more speed coming out of these algorithms. But let's also make sure that those numbers that we're generating, that, that they're not the same, that they aren't correlated to each other. Let's bring in Pearson's R to make sure that they're not correlated. So I'll just add some code to the end here, and we'll go grab the random state from that SIMD distribution, the SFMT 19937. And we're going to skip ahead. We're going to actually skip out 2 to the 60th. That number of steps ahead to make sure that it's completely random. And we're going to do that for just one of these two distributions. The other one will start at the beginning. We'll start from the zero position. We'll run that through our Pearson R test and see what we get. All right, there we go. We've got a negative 0017 and a 0.58. If these were correlated, if these were similar, we would expect to see numbers that were at negative one or at positive one because they would correlate appropriately. And they don't. They're somewhere in the middle here. They're not correlated, even though we skipped ahead two to the 60th number of steps. That means they're truly random. They're not the same. This is great now. Now I've got assurance here that I can use that parallel Mersenne Twister algorithm to generate some random numbers for testing going forward. Hey, thanks so much for watching. This has been another one of Fritz's 10-Minute Tips.